Should we, uh... I should think this we... is recording. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. See? Oh, yeah, it is. So, maybe we'll get rid of that. <laughs> okay. Tell me when you want to, want to start. I don't care. You can start, like, Are we right already now. recording? I think it is, so... Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Reeves. We're going to talk about peripheral neuropathies. And you know I'm a real doctor because, look, I have a white coat. See? And I'm going to tell you things that are true because it's on the internet, everything's true. We're going to talk today about peripheral neuropathies. Now, um, I'll talk about myself towards the end of the video so that you actually don't have to watch that part. Peripheral neuropathy is kind of three words put together. Peripheral neuropathy. So I'm, I'm going to draw something here. Can. can you turn that off, please? Thank you. You got that? I think I do. Okay. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to draw something here. This is a brain. And uh, let's put a body on this. Kind of a funny looking body. The brain and the spinal cord are the central nervous system. And at every level up and down the spinal cord, there are nerves that come out and they run through the body. And where there's a central nervous system, there must be a peripheral nervous system. So peripheral nerve, and then apathy just means problem with. So saying somebody has a peripheral neuropathy is saying they have a problem with the peripheral nerves. So that's a who and a what and a where, but it's not a why. It's not a how. So we got all these nerves coming out, running different places through the body. Now let's take a little little cross section of one of these and we're going to blow it up into a big kind of cable here. So here's our big cable carrying all these wires different directions up and down through the body. So I'm going to make several different kinds of of, of wires going through the cable here. Fibers uh, that are, and fibers or nerves or wires that are carrying information from the brain down through the peripheral nerve, they're carrying information this way, they're going to the muscles. Okay? And so they're carrying information that way. And there's, uh, and the, you know, your brain says, hey, I want to I want to wiggle my fingers, and so the command comes from the brain down through the spinal cord, out through the peripheral nerves to the muscles here. Great. So these are the motor fibers, and they're carrying information out to the muscles. And there are fibers that are carrying information up to the spinal cord, and then it goes up to the brain. So when somebody touches you or wiggles your finger, you know, you have that feeling. It goes up the peripheral nerve and into the spinal cord and the brain. So these are the sensory fibers. Now there's some other fibers here. I'm going to just put an A by those. Um, and we're going to get to those in a second. So uh, you can see I've craftily drawn that there are, are large fibers and small fibers going through the peripheral nerves. And in neurology, we have a very sophisticated term. We call them large fibers and small fibers. Now, people can have a peripheral neuropathy that affects large fibers, small fibers, or both, sensory fibers mostly, or even sensory fibers only, motor fibers mostly or only, or both. And in addition, these wires, I'm going to draw, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this wire now and we're going to even look more closely at it. So we're going to blow this one up. Uh, and we have the wire going through the nerve. And we have bundles of insulation around the wires. Okay. So we have fancy words for for the wires and for the insulation. We have medical words for them, but really that's what they mean is the wire part and the insulation part. And so you can have a peripheral neuropathy that is mostly affecting the wire or mostly affecting the insulation or a mix or both. So you can see that there's a lot of different flavors of neuropathy. You can have motor, sensory, kind of axonal or, or wire or demyelinating or insulation or mixed kinds of things. Now, 
the on the sensory side, the large fibers carry uh, a lot of uh, I'll put their LT for light touch. Uh, they carry uh, joint position sense. Uh, they carry kind of fine uh, uh, discrimination. You know, when you 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 put your fit, your hand in the pocket and you you feel around at the coins, you say, oh, that's a quarter, and oh, that one's a nickel. You're using your kind of very fine large fiber th sensing things. The small fibers carry pre predominantly pain and temperature. So when you have a small fiber sensory problem, people often say, oh, they kind of burn and they're cold and they hurt or ache. Uh, kind of, that would be a typical small fiber peripheral neuropathy uh, kind of, of problem. On the motor side, if you have a, a neuropathy, you get weakness. Now, you can have a lar uh, excuse me, a small fiber, m these patients don't really have a lot of symptoms from the small fibers on the motor side being affected, so it's not as big of a deal. Now, these small fibers are autonomic fibers, and that you can think of the autonomic fibers as carrying information that uh, governs a lot of stuff that just hop happens automatically. Nobody sits there saying, okay, heartbeat uh, 73 times a minute. See, I think I'll run my blood pressure at about 142 over eh, 91. See, doesn't ha you don't do that. It happens automatically. Sweating, digestion, parts of uh, pooping and peeing, uh, parts of sexual function, um, how much uh, tears uh, are in your eyes, how much saliva is made in your mouth, all of these things, they just happen automatically. People who have large fiber only neuropathies, whether it's motor, sensory, or mixed, don't have as big a problem with those things. People who have predominantly small fiber neuropathies, they tend to have a lot of problems uh, in, in all these different areas. And so they'll come in saying, well, my feet are numb and they tingle and they burn, often worse at night. And, um, you know, I have uh, palpitations and my, uh, I got constipation or diarrhea or a mixture of those. And, you know, my, my um, eyes don't focus well. Uh, I got blurry vision. Well, because that happens automatically. You don't, you don't sort of do it on your own. Um, my blood pressure regulation may be off, and they say, well, I stand up and I get really lightheaded. And I want to feel like I'm going to pass out, or maybe I may have even fainted. And the other thing to talk about peripheral neuropathies is, is that most disorders that cause a peripheral neuropathy, the longer the nerve, the more the damage. It's sort of like the longer the telephone line, the more static there is on the line, I guess. The longest nerves in the body, the peripheral nerves, go uh, longest peripheral nerves go from the low spinal cord down to the to the toes. And the second longest ones, I guess you could say, come from about the neck down to the fingers. Look at me, I've got colors. So if we have nerves that going down here to the the toes, The symptoms of a peripheral neuropathy will typically show up here first. By the time it gets up to about the ankle or so, now we're talking about the length that goes from the neck down to the fingers. And so by the time you start getting symptoms up to somewhere around the ankle, uh, you often are picking up a little bit in the fingertips. Now, so for example, it would be very uncommon, in fact, I would, I would question the diagnosis of a peripheral neuropathy. If somebody came in and said, yeah, I'm numb all the way up to my feet. Okay, but my hands are fine. I said, gee, that, it doesn't really usually work like that. So that's a quick uh, Cook's tour of what a peripheral neuropathy is, but we haven't talked about why people get them. Um, they, the, the first number one cause in the United States of peripheral neuropathy is diabetes, and the number two cause is diabetes, and number three cause is diabetes. The uh, other common things, uh, people who drink too much alcohol can get a peripheral neuropathy. Uh, not always, but they tend to get a, a large fiber sensory neuropathy. Uh, but it, if you look, if you go to Dr. Google and you, you, you type in uh, causes of peripheral neuropathy, you get a... Uh, a uh, list that's as long as your arm. And the, 
the list that's as long as your arm of things that cause peripheral neuropathy includes basically any unusual toxic chemical that some fool could wander into that can damage their nerves, some fool has wandered into it. So while we often worry about certain things like heavy metals or uh, certain other chemicals, unless you're really exposed to these quite a bit, uh, then, and usually it has to do with what you do for work, then it usually isn't that big a deal. Uh, if you come in and you say, gee, I, I like to, uh, I have a motor neuropathy and I, I like to make uh, fishing lures and I melt lead in my garage every weekend and I breathe the fumes, well now we might have something to worry about. Um, so typically the poisons that people often worry about, we think about them and we need to ask about them, usually turns out not to be that. Sometimes the neuropathy is inherited. There's a whole host of uh, what we call hereditary sensory motor neuropathies and hereditary sensory autonomic neuropathies where sometimes the genes have been identified as the cause too and we know which gene it might be. Those tests are usually not, some of them are commercially available, not all of them are. So we can't always test them. And even when we can and you find it, you can't do anything about it. In evaluating peripheral neuropathies, there's a whole there's other diseases that can cause a peripheral neuropathy where there's abnormal immune proteins floating around in the blood or other kinds of problems going on in the blood. Some metabolic problems can cause peripheral neuropathies. We look for those. We run a blood, the blood tests. When I'm going to evaluate a peripheral neuropathy with a patient, I generally will say, hey, we're going to do all these blood tests. You're going to think I'm trying to kill you with blood tests. At least half the time, at the end of all of that, I'm going to look at you and say, I, I still don't know why you have a peripheral neuropathy, but you do. And that's not very rewarding for the patient or the doctor, but that's the reality. And I always remind myself that if we don't do the tests, then 100% of the time I won't know why you have a peripheral neuropathy. In terms of electrical testing, there's two main kinds of tests that we do. The first of these is an EMG. I call it a nerve and muscle conduction test. And that really is a large fiber test. It's, it's, it, it checks the, the large sensory fibers and the large motor fibers. It doesn't really test the small fibers. We don't have widely available tests of the sensory small fibers. There are such tests where you put needles into the nerves and it's incredibly painful and it's used only really in research. Um, the, the autonomic small fibers though, we do have nice objective tests for that and so we run an autonomic lab where we measure certain things about the blood pressure and heart rate regulation and the sweating regulation and that kind of stuff. When those are abnormal we feel pretty comfortable that there's a small fiber part of the neuropathy. So it wouldn't surprise anybody that when, you're, when you feel that there's a need to do testing, electrical testing of the nerves, very commonly we'll use both of these, the EMG for large fiber, the, the autonomic uh, reflex screen for the small fiber, and after that we can often get a sense, well, how much of this is large fiber, how much is small fiber. Sometimes we get a sense how much of this is the wire, how much of this is the, the uh, insulation. So. That's a quick Cook's tour about what a peripheral neuropathy is, how we test it. I haven't talked anything about treatment uh, because that really depends partly on what you think the cause is. And there are symptomatic treatments when people have nerve pain, you know, is it tingling, burning, what have you. We use different kinds of treatments. And that really, that discussion is more um, wide ranging and probably should be part of another video. Thanks for paying attention. I'm Dr. Reeves. I am a neurologist. I have uh, been practicing for more than a couple of years and I want my patients and, and the general public to be as informed as they can be about the problems and diseases they have because the smarter the, the person is, the easier it is and the more effectively we can all work together. Have a good day. What do you think? Good. I really don't know how to stop this. Maybe press this.